Proverbs 15 verses 1 to 33 is soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hadeth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. A merry heart mocketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is, than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. The way of the slothful man is as an hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son mocketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it! The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hadeth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report mocketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Opening Sentence Proverbs 15 verse 1 is soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Finding the theme, words affect actions. Proverbs chapter 15 has numerous references to heart, soul and spirit, the inner man. The heart is affected by the words it has received, and the mouth will overflow with the contents of the heart. Proverbs 15 verse 2 The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Previous Proverbs have already taught that the contents of a man's heart are known to God. Proverbs 6 verse 18, 12 verse 20, 14 10, 13 to 14, 33. This concept is presented again in the following verse. Proverbs 15 verse 3 The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A broken spirit. A man can only speak with a wholesome tongue if the words in his heart are wholesome. Perverse words coming out of the mouth reveal an unsound inner man. Sound words are learned by receiving God's instructions. Proverbs 15 verses 4 to 5 A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. The tree of life hearkens back to the garden of Eden and man's first choice between obeying the wholesome words of God, or believing Satan's lie. Yea, hath God said, 
Choosing to believe the lie caused man to experience great trouble physically and a broken spirit inwardly. House of treasure or trouble. A house can represent the inner man. Treasure is the word of God. Proverbs 15 verse 6 In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. This is not the first time trouble has been mentioned in the book of Proverbs. Trouble will be encountered again in verses 16 and 27 of this chapter. Trouble is a certain result of disobeying the word of God, which brings God's correction and reproof upon the Son. Disperse Knowledge Proverbs 15 verse 7 The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. There is an expectation that the Son of God will be able to teach the knowledge of God, if he has the treasure of the word dwelling in his heart. This is not the case for the son who rejects his word. God loves and God hates. Proverbs 15 verses 8 to 10 The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hadeth reproof shall die. Just as the heart of the Son is known unto God the Father, the heart of God can be known unto the Son when he understands his word. A faithful son will know the daylight his father feels towards him, because he follows after righteousness. But the wicked son will only know God's extreme hatred because he has rejected the correction of his father. The Naked Heart Proverbs 15 verse 11 Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more than the hearts of the children of men. As stated in the introduction of this study guide, many of these proverbs are also found in Job, the oldest book of the Bible. This proverb exposes the nakedness of man's heart in God's sight, which is confirmed by Job and the writers of Hebrews. Job 26 verse 6 Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. Hebrews 4 verse 13 Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Despise reproof. Proverbs 15 verse 12 A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. The only way for God's Son to regard discretion and keep knowledge, Proverbs 5 verse 2, is by allowing God's word to reprove and correct his false doctrine. A son who refuses to be corrected is called a scorner or a despiser. Proverbs 5 verse 12 and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof. A continual feast. The following passage is often misunderstood, and must be considered in light of the previous Proverbs. A merry heart is not necessarily a positive thing, because it is possible to conceal the true condition of the inner man with a false outward appearance. Proverbs 15 verses 13 to 17 A merry heart mocketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. The condition of the heart will be determined by the doctrine that is received and believed. It is only by feasting upon the wholesome words of God that will make the heart truly merry. This continual feast is not about the belly seeking delicate food, but a heart seeking the knowledge and wisdom of God. God desires His Son to come to Him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and trust in His word, Psalms 34 verse 18, 51 colon 17 and Isaiah 57 verse 15, 66 colon 2. Verses 13 to 17 are rich with cross references for Israel's seven year tribulation, the time when the nation will have to endure a very difficult trial of their faith. They can choose to follow God, possess little, and eat a dinner of herbs or they can choose to enjoy a continual feast with a merry heart if they follow Satan, take the mark of the beast and worship the God of this world. If they follow God, they will have affliction, trouble and death for a season, yet they will have eternal life and escape the destruction of hell. 
This is why Jesus said, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8 verse 36 Israel will have to make a choice between God and mammon during the Great Tribulation. Wrath and Anger In Scripture, strife is often linked with envy. In the context of the time of Jacob's trouble, the believing remnant of Israel will experience envy of the wicked and their anger will be stirred by those who appear to prosper. While they endure a great trial of suffering, Psalms 73 verse 3, the Antichrist is a wrathful man who stirs up strife, Revelation 12 verse 12. It will be necessary for the remnant to remain faithful to God's instructions during this time. Proverbs 15 verse 18 A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Being slow to anger is a sure way to avoid strife. The book of James, which is written to the twelve tribes of Israel for their last days, James 1, 1, 5, 3, also speaks of the danger of strife in the inner man. James 3, verse 14, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. James 3, verse 16, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Walk uprightly in the plain path. Proverbs 15 verses 19 to 21 The way of the slothful man is as an hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son mocketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. The folly of the unwise, slothful son despises God's word, and as a result he cannot see the dangers in the path he has chosen. The righteous son walks uprightly in the path made plain by the light of God's word, a word spoken in due season. Proverbs 15 verses 22 to 23 Without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? God's counsel is good. It is also timely. God did not give all his word at once, but instead revealed it over thousands of years as it suited his purpose. The Bible was not officially canonized into one complete book until the 4th century AD, and God did not send his son. The word of God made flesh until about 4,000 years after creation. God's word is perfect, and God's timing is perfect. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Hell beneath. Proverbs 15 verse 24 The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Earlier in this chapter, hell was shown to be naked before God's eyes, and it was compared to the heart of man. God is described as dwelling in heaven above and being the God of the earth beneath. Hell is described as being the lowest. Hell is not only physically and geographically located lower, but it is a state of very low spiritual existence. Deuteronomy 4 verse 39 Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath there is none else. Psalm 86 colon 13 For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell, the house of the proud. Proverbs 15 verses 25 to 27 The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hadeth gifts shall live. To be proud is the opposite of being humble and lowly. A humble man gives heed to God's instructions and will speak those words to others. A proud man thinks only of himself and making physical gains, which leads him to destruction. The heart of the righteous and the mouth of the wicked. Proverbs 15 verses 28 to 29 The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. This is the first use of any form of the word study in the scriptures, and it is connected with the word heart. 
Many proverbs emphasize the content of the heart, which is made known as it pours out of the son's mouth. In this particular proverb, prayer proceeded out of the mouth of the righteous after studying God's word. Eyes and Ears Proverbs 15 verses 30 to 32 The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report mocketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Both the light of the eyes and the good report are the word of God. Those who hear God's word will allow it to correct and reprove them. Jesus commended those among his followers who believed all the words he spoke unto them. Matthew 13 verse 16 But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Conclusion Proverbs 15 verse 33 The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. This chapter concludes with the key to making correct choices. Humility and the fear of the Lord will lead the son to receive his father's instructions, thereby making him wise. Summary God has given instructions to his son in the written word. He will either receive and believe it, or he will reject and despise it. The word of God is wholesome, and the son who receives it will have righteousness, understanding, joy, and life. The son who despises the word will have hatred, trouble, hell, and death. The key to attaining God's wisdom is by the fear of the Lord and humility. The mouth of the wise son will speak of the knowledge of God, but the mouth of the foolish son will pour out evil. Dispensational Consideration God gave his word due season. He first gave a written copy to the nation of Israel. They entered into a covenant agreement with God and vowed to keep his law. The law required the children of Israel to love God with all their hearts. Deuteronomy 6, 5, 10, 12, 13. It was possible for them to our outwardly perform the requirements of the law, yet secretly despise God's word in their heart. God has always known what is in man's heart. God loved the nation of Israel, not because they were worthy but because he chose to do so. Deuteronomy 7 verses 6 to 8 And he demonstrated his love towards them by teaching them righteousness and showing them mercy. God gave his word to the Apostle Paul, beginning in Acts chapter 9, and he preserved it in the letters of Romans to Philemon. God loves believers in the dispensation of grace, not because they're worthy, but because of his son's worth. God offers mercy to anyone who will believe the gospel of the grace of God, which is by simply trusting in Christ, sacrificial payment for their sins. Believers are now able to love God and walk uprightly because they trust in God's word. Life Application The mouth of a believer will speak out of the treasure in his heart. A believer can choose to continually feast upon the word of God or upon the things of the world. God still hates wickedness and loves righteousness, and he will judge the lost world based on their performance. Believers are safely hidden in Jesus Christ by faith in his blood, and they will not be judged for their sins because Jesus already suffered for them on the cross. God correct believers today by his written word, and at the judgment seat of Christ believers will be judged by the quality of their work based upon the word of God working in their lives. Romans 14 verse 10, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. While believers will not have to endure the fiery trial that is appointed for Israel and the unbelieving world, it is wise for them to separate themselves from this present evil world. The way of the righteous is still made plain, but the word of God. Proverbs 16 verse 9 A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. The free will of man and the outcome of the Lord is the subject of the next chapter. Proverbs chapter 15 Homework Concordance Search All Forms of the Word Heart is found 884 times in the King James Bible. List the top four books in which the word is found and the number of times it occurs. Proverbs 82 times Highlight the word heart throughout Proverbs. Note a greater understanding of the condition of the human heart and also God's heart can be learned by studying all the references to heart found in the books listed above.
highlight, find all forms of the word trouble. Highlight each use of the word in the book of Proverbs. Refine the search to include the phrase time of trouble. The book of Jeremiah has much to say about the time of Jacob's trouble, which pertains to the nation of Israel. Study these as time allows. Define. Consider Deuteronomy 12 verse 31 and Proverbs 6 verse 16 to understand how the word abomination is defined as hate. Look up abomination in Webster's 1828 Dictionary for comparison. Concordance search. Find both strife and envy to see their connection in scripture. They are often found among long lists of sins. During Israel's time of trouble, they will be tempted to envy the prosperity of the wicked. Find wicked and prosper in a King James Bible and study these two references in context. You might also search for the phrase at ease for a deeper study on this topic. Concordance search. Find the words proud and pride in the book of Proverbs. Use these verses to understand the definition of the word and how God views those who are proud. It is helpful to make a list of words that mean the opposite of pride. Hell, the word hell is found in the book of Proverbs seven times, but it is not well defined. Search for the word hell in the King James Bible and make a list of words associated with it. The first time the word is used is in Deuteronomy 32 verse 22 in association with the words fire, God's anger, burning, and consumption. By the time Proverbs was written, hell was a well understood topic. Above and beneath, search a concordance for the words above and beneath when used together and compare those verses. These words do not always mean physically higher or lower. The following verse demonstrates that those words can be figurative to describe a state of existence or favor with God. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them, study the phrases apply thine heart, or applieth thine heart, along with attend to or give attendance, could be submitted for the word study. Use a concordance to find where and how these words or phrases are used in scripture.